Let's have a look at a technique for converting motion trails to curves in Maya. A lot of times when animators are animating a flying creature or perhaps a, a serpent or even geometry that needs to move along a spline, they'll use a motion trail to help visualize the trajectory. Now, wouldn't it be nice to take that motion trail and convert it to a curve? What can we do with that? Well, we could always attach the object to the path as a path animated constraint and then we can then sculpt the path to kind of smooth the animation out or if we wanted to have another object follow the animation we can constrain that new object to our curve so these are just a few ideas so let's say we go ahead and get started underneath the animation module I'm gonna take this this object that I've animated, which is simply a locator that I am moving along this spiraling path. And I'm just going to go ahead and view its motion trail. So under Visualize, Edible Motion Trail. Lovely. So you can see that the path here needs a little bit of work, but I'm not concerned by that. Because eventually, after we're done with this script, we'll be able to grab this object, convert it into a curve, and it'll be a one-to-one -one match with the motion trail. So that'll be awesome. And then at that point, we could then rebuild the curve that is output from the script to reshape the animation. All right, so let's see if we go ahead and get started. Now, what I'd like to do is go ahead and jump over to Panels and change the layout to Two Pane Stack. And then I'll go ahead and take this lower stack and make this the script editor. Sweet. Almost looks like I have the script editor open. You can see that it's grayed out here. So if it is grayed out, that means it's open. So I'll just go ahead and quickly bring that back up by clicking on the script editor button. Lovely. Now, once we close this out, watch this. When we go back to panels and we choose panel, now we can go ahead and access the script editor. Lovely. All right, sweet. I'm also going to right click in the history of the script editor and choose clear history so we can start with a clean slate. Now we are going to be using Python for this. Python is a universal scripting language and it's used often in studios because it's pretty user friendly. So let's go ahead and get to it. I'd also like to point out that I'm going to be releasing a course soon that basically covers how to connect a rig to follow a path. So if you are interested in that, I will share the course with you once it is ready to go. All right, fantastic. But let's see if we go ahead and get to it. What I'd now like to do is show you how to create a new Python tab if you'd like. So if you want to, you can right click inside of this Python tab, the existing one, and then choose new tab and now we could choose the language we'd like. So yes, this can work whether we're under the Python tab or Mel tab. And then if you'd like to remove this tab, you can right click and choose delete and then current tab. But of course we don't want to remove this because we need it for our tool. <laughs> All right, let's say we go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'd like to do is import our my commands and I'll hold down control and scroll forward with the middle mouse button so you can see exactly what I'm typing here. So that's going to be import maya.cmds as mc. That way we could start using my commands with Python. Now I'll hit enter on the keyboard to move this down one line. Lovely. What I'd now like to do is create a commented line. This is a great way for adding notes because Maya will not evaluate the commented line. We could also use this to create a name for our tool. So I'll just go ahead and add a hashtag and we'll name this motion trail to curve. And again, I can type in whatever here. Doesn't matter because Maya will not evaluate this line. All right, lovely. In that course I was mentioning earlier that again can be used to connect a rig to follow a curve. I have a more elaborate breakdown of coding with Python. So for this, I'm just going to kind of jump in from here and and explain things along the way. But if you want more of a breakdown, feel free to have a look at that course. All right, sweet, so getting started, 
we now want to search for our selected animated object. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to create a variable for it, which is a short form of the command that we'll use to find our selection. That way we don't have to type in a lengthy code to get to the selected item. We could just simply use its variable. So I'm going to go ahead and name that cell because it makes sense, cell for selection. It can be cheese if you want it to be. <laughs> just don't use the name of a command because it won't work. <laughs> so that's going to be cell and we'll have that equal to MC right this is the short form of my commands so this is what we'll use instead of typing maya.tmds each time so MC dot LS which lists everything in Maya and then we'll add an open and close parentheses which is necessary after the command just to let Python know that we are ready to run the command. And if we have any arguments that come along with this command, they would be stored inside of the parentheses. For example, if I go ahead and highlight LS and right click and choose Quick Help, here are all of its arguments. And then I can right click and choose Show Command Documentation to have a more elaborate breakdown of each argument that comes along with the command. And at the top, you'll see what the command does. Again, so it's used for listing objects in our scene. So I'll now go ahead and close this out and we'll move forward. Now, I'm going to use the argument SL to search for my selection. So I'll have that equal to true. And then I'll separate this flag with a flag that will allow us to search for transform nodes. So that's going to be type equals and then I'll add two single quotes and inside I'll specify that I'm searching for a transform node. Why a transform node? Because this object was animated using the transform node. It's that straightforward, right? I'm using the translation to drive this object. So transforms in, in 3D essentially mean translate, rotate, and scale. All right, but let's go ahead and move forward. So now we have a variable to find our selected items. And I want to show you just one more thing here before we go ahead and move forward. If I go ahead and type in print cell, watch this. Now when we highlight everything and hit enter on the number pad, that way we can evaluate the script and it will not be cleared out of the script editor. That's why we highlight our command. You'll notice that when we go ahead and highlight our script here, that we now have a printout of what we have selected, which is the locator. All right, fantastic. So I just wanted to again show you something else that you might find useful. The print function is great for kind of searching for data that is being created in the code. All right, but let's go ahead and move forward. So now what we need to do is find our start and end frames of our playback range because we're going to use that as our build range for our curve. What that means is that it won't always be the length of the curve or the motion trail unless you want it to be. So if I wanted this to be, let's say, half the range, I can go ahead and set this frame range from 1 to 60. So you get the idea. But I'm going to go ahead and set this back to 120 because that's the full range of the animation. So great. So we'll allow users to choose whatever they'd like to extract from this motion trail by simply adjusting the range slider. All right, so to do that, let's go ahead and create a variable named start, and we'll have this equal to MC dot play back, and then capital O for options. We'll add an open and close parentheses, and inside, we need to add a few arguments first we'll need to use Q to query or search for something. What do we want to search for? Our start time in our playback range. So how do we do that? Well, simple. We'll add a comma space to separate this argument from the next one we'll use. And that one's going to be min. And we'll have that equal to true, which means, hey, what is our start frame of, again, our playback range? So right now, my start frame is one, but if I go ahead and adjust this to about frame 14, that's new start frame. So just to show you this, 
and I won't be printing everything, but I just want to show you how this works. So I'll just go ahead and grab start. I'll copy this variable, paste. And now if I go ahead and run this, take a look, it's frame 14. If I go ahead and adjust this back to frame 1, and I'll run this again, take a look, it's now frame 1. So you get the idea. All right, so we know how to find our start frame in the playback range. Let's go ahead and find our end frame. So I'll just go ahead and copy this, paste, and I'll change start to end. And what do we need to change here? You guessed it, instead of min, that's going to be max. All right, lovely. Let's go ahead and move down to the next line, just hitting enter on the keyboard. All right, sweet. So now what we want to do is basically create a for loop that allows us to basically use this on whatever curve or animated object we have selected. So whatever objects that we've animated, we can go ahead and generate a curve from those objects. So that's going to be as follows. For each in cell, so each is going to be the variable that we use in our for loop that points to our selection. So we're basically going to iterate on all items in our selection. So I'll go ahead and add a colon to end this line of our for loop. And now when we hit enter on the keyboard, my is automatically going to add an indent, which is necessary for Python, so it knows what to do inside of the for loop. So without this indent, we'd get an error. So if you'd like to, let's say if you accidentally move to this first space on this line, you could always hit the tab key to add an indent. All right, fantastic. So let's go ahead and move forward from here. Now, what we're going to be doing is something pretty clever. We're going to create geometry and use that to create an animated snapshot. So geometry is necessary for the animated snapshot. And the great thing about that is we can then go ahead and basically connect transforms to all of the geometry. And the geometry is going to follow the animated object. So by the end of this, we're basically going to have a curve that is aligned to all of the geometry that will be created from our snapshot. So that's essentially how this is going to work. So let's go ahead and just name this geo and eventually we're going to get rid of this geometry and all we'll have left is the animated object and a new curve. So geo, what is this equal to? So that's going to be mc dot poly cube. So I'll just go ahead and work with a cube. We'll add an open and close bracket. And inside, I'm going to add the number zero. And right after the poly cube, I'm going to add an open and close parentheses. Remember, we need this when running commands with Python and Maya. Now this bracket zero basically means that we just want the transform node of this new cube. All right, fantastic. We don't need the shape node, just the, the transform node here, because we're going to basically constrain the transform node to our, our animated object. So watch this. When we go to this next line, we can go ahead and use the point constraint command to connect our cube to the animated object. So again, what this means is that whatever animated object we have selected, it's going to cre create a cube and connect that cube to the selected animated object. So it's going to be MC dot point constraint. And then at that point, we'll add an open and close parentheses. And inside, we'll type each because that is the variable for our selection within the for loop. We'll add a comma space. And then the last thing we add is the geometry that we're trying to point constrain. Lovely. So if we were to go ahead and run this, you'll notice that if I go ahead and press Control A to highlight the code and hit Enter on the number pad, we now have a cube that's connected to our animated object. Have a look at that. It's point constrained. And I could always go to the cube shape just to bring this up to show you. So there it is. It's following the locator. All right, lovely. All right, so that's working. I'll go ahead and undo back to basically remove the cube, and we'll go ahead and continue. So what's next? Well, now we're ready to create the animated snapshot. So here's how this is going to work. We now need to tell Maya to select the cube. So that's going to be mc.select, open and close parentheses, and inside we'll type in geo, which is the variable for our cube. 
Now we'll add a comma space to add an argument here and that will simply be to replace our selection with this selection. So it's just a safety measure to make sure that Maya is only selecting what we're asking for, which in this case is the cube, which is geo. So r equals true. Yes, we would like to replace our selection with this. Lovely. So now we can hit enter on the keyboard to move this down to the next line, and we're ready to create our animated snapshot. So we're going to create a variable for this too, so we can access this snapshot later. So we'll name this snap underscore node, and we'll have this equal to mc dot snapshot, all lowercase. And now we'll add our open and close parentheses. And within this, let's go ahead and create a name for our snapshot group. So that's going to be n equals. We'll use the name of our selected item. How do we do that? Simple. We simply type in the variable that we're using in our for loop, which is each. So each plus, and now we'll add two single quotes. And within, we'll add an underscore snap. So what this is basically saying is, I'd like to name this snapshot group, the name of my selection, plus, and this is going to essentially be part of the suffix, underscore snap. Lovely, so that'll help us stay organized and search for this object later very easily. So now what we need to do is add a few more arguments to this. Let's go ahead and tell Maya to increment every frame that way we can match the shape of our motion trail. So that's going to be increment equals one for every frame. And again, if you have any questions, just go ahead and highlight the command, right click and choose quick help or command documentation. You could also use the short form, which is I, so that would work too. Now, we're next going to tell Maya to use our start and end frames to create the snapshot. So have a look. The start time, which is st, is going to be equal to what? Well, start, right? Because that's the variable we created to find our start time in the playback range. All right, so now, after that, I'll add a comma space. And then from there, we'll go ahead and assign our end frame by typing in et for end time and we'll have this equal to end, which is our variable for the end frame. Lovely. All right, so lastly, we'll tell Maya to do this all according to our animated objects change every frame. So all we have to do is use the flag u for update. So u equals, and then to tell Maya that we'd like to use the animated object over time, let's add two single quotes and inside we'll type in anim and then capital C for curve. Lovely. All right, cool. So just to show you what this does, if we were to take our locator, press control A to highlight everything, we can now hit enter on our number pad to run this and take a look. We not only have a cube, but we have these transform nodes along our path. I'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see this. So take a look. We have all of these transforms, which are essentially the cubes that we have created. But these are snapshot objects. Exciting stuff. So everything's working so far. That's fantastic. Let's go ahead and move forward. So I'll just go ahead and press the Z key a few times to undo back.